Fifty Akron. seven. You better believe it. The Akron Zips. Let's talk about the changeover. All right. Tom Arth is gone, and they have hired in former Oregon offensive coordinator, former Mississippi State head coach, and former Penn State offensive coordinator slash Fordham head coach way back when. Joe yep. Moorhead takes over a 2-10 and football team that went 1-7 and in the conference last year. Their projected SP plus record this year is three and nine, and I got to tell you, I don't see them getting to three. This roster is not a very good roster. Uh, now I will tell you, their returning production is number eighteen. Uh, yeah, number eighteen in the country. Seventy six percent of their production is coming back. It's number seventy eight on offense and number two on defense. But the defense was an absolute dumpster fire last year, Chris. Number 129 in defensive PPA per drive, number 130 in defensive rushing success rate allowed, and number 125 in defensive passing success rate allowed. Uh, people may look at these numbers and say, wait a minute. So if they were that bad, why was their explosive play rate like actually ranked relatively high, like at number 58? Well, the answer there is because when you can get five yards on any play that you want to, you don't have to bust 50 yarders all the time. Like, you come out, yeah. you run the clock, and you just get out of there. Uh, and that's what everybody did against Akron last year. Uh, you look at the defense, the secondary is the best unit, but it's not great. The front seven is severely lacking this year. Uh, and this was the issue last year. They were next to last in, in FBS and PBA per drive, what I just talked about. Um they're only number 105 in roster strength, according to the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. They did bring in a new defensive coordinator, right? And obviously, you're going to bring in a new staff when you're Joe Moorhead. But Moorhead brought an analyst from Oregon with him named Nick Toth. And once you got into March, Nick Toth left for Air Force uh, to be a position coach. So Moorhead had to bring in Tim Tibisar. I'm hoping I say that right who was fired as the defensive coordinator in the middle of the year last year at Oregon State. So the defense is going to have to improve consistency and success here. That's a big issue. Uh, the offense, you know, it's it's Moorhead. Like, we got to figure out what they got. Um, they got big losses, obviously. The quarterback, Watts, that's a big loss. Uh, quarterback, Zach Gibson, you know, at the end of the year last year, he wasn't the guy, but he's, you know, it would have been nice to have had him. Linebacker Michael Scott and the wide receiver Kanata Mumfield, who left to go to Pitt, by the way. Nobody talks about that. Pitt took their uh, best wide receiver. Uh, regardless, their top players, uh, the quarterback, DJ Irons, they brought in running back Cam Wiley from Minnesota. I think that's going to be awesome. And then the wide receiver, Shockey Jacques Luis from Pitt. That's going to be a pretty cool swap there. Uh, the, quarter, or the quarterback, DJ Irons, Chris, I don't know if you've seen this guy. He is six foot six, 215 pounds. Um, I think that he is going to do a lot of what Moorhead has done everywhere he's gone. He's going to run the quarterback quite a bit. Uh, Irons averaged 11.4 carries per game last year. I don't think this is going to be an overnight success on this. The roster is just not good enough. It's a big, big rebuilding job. And I think that Joe just wanted to be the head coach again. Is that kind of what you feel on this one? Well, I think so, but I also think that he thinks he can win in the MAC. Like, maybe not this year, because it's obviously going to be a rebuilding year. But I, I think in a, you know, in a year or two, I don't think they're super far away from being competitive, from being there because of the transfer portal, because of, I think, his ability to coach guys up from an offensive standpoint. I, I think they're going to be okay this year. I think they're going to struggle to get two wins. That's that's where I am. <laughs> they're uh, hey, their non conference schedule, by the way. They open with St. Francis, so you should open up with a win. That should be good. Yeah, you know, start off one and get your W. Then you sure. play at Michigan State, at Tennessee, at Liberty. You got Bowling Green coming in at home. Like it, that's going to open up your MAC play is Bowling Green at home. Um, going to be this is going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting. That's, year. that's your chance. That's your chance to get a win. You got that right. St. Francis right there. I've got them going 2-10. and ten. Like, I got them beating Bowling Green, but I don't, you know. I, I just, I think Same somewhere thing. they are going to get a, a Mac win. I just don't They'll know where it's going to be. They'll find a win because I think, Joe, I think Joe is a good coach. And I think yeah. this is the level where he can not just be successful, but he can be long-term successful. I think he's tried his hand with the big boys. 
at Mississippi State didn't work out. And and I think this is a place that he can, you know, not only find success, but but find real success and uh and, and be one of those long term Matt coaches for, for a while and build something. I, I think you're right there. Uh I'll tell you what he's gonna fix off like right off the bat. The rushing success rate for this bunch last year was number ninety three in the country. Uh you bring in Cam Wiley, you let DJ Irons do his thing. I would imagine they are going to fix that pretty easy. They they should be better than the three yards per carry that this team was last year. Uh, along with that, you know, I, can the defense make stops, right? Defensive explosive rate was decent, again, like I said. Um, but other teams, they are going to have to find a way to slow down some teams on defense. I don't know that they've got the personnel to do it. Uh, I just don't think they'll do that this year. No, I don't think so. I, I've got them 2-10. Uh, you have you got the same thing. Same thing. Same and like thing. I said, I, I'm assuming it's the Bowling Green team because I don't think they're very good. But, you know, I think they'll win a game. I think he's good enough to catch somebody. Oh, the Mac's always crazy. I would imagine once we get into November, like they've, you know, they'll get somebody. They've got Eastern Michigan at home. They play at Buffalo. You know, they'll, they'll find somebody that they can beat. And who knows? I mean, Ohio – like maybe that's a team uh, after that Bowling Green game. They can come in there and get one of those. They, I think it's possible that they win uh, several of these games. I just don't find it likely as of yet. That's right. So, oh yeah, no, I'm not saying it's not possible. And we've been real wrong on this show in the past. About <laughs> we certainly this. have. So we'll be pulling this for conference him. last year. Yeah. yeah. No, no, we like Joe, and we want, we want to see him do better. But yeah, I'd like the Mac to get back to being fun. You got that right. But right now. I just don't think it is, man. I don't think it's fun like it used to be. No, it's it's not the same that it was. This in, is one of those yeah. conferences that has not done a very good job of staying relevant and evolving with the game. As the game has gotten more fast-paced and explosive, the MAC has stayed in the mud, slowing the game down, um, and, and, and haven't evolved to a more athletic style of football. And uh, and I think that's hurt them. I think that's hurt them a lot because you see these Mountain West teams, you see the American, and you know the MAC didn't used to take a second place to any G five school in no. the past, and now and now they they're falling like crazy. It like, is it's strange. Teams that yeah. are a lot better than them. It's strange how it is uh, how it's turned over, right? At, ever since PJ Fleck and, went undefeated, uh, this this league has not been the same. Not been the same. That's right. Uh, but you never know. We might talk about some good things once we get into the Mac West. You never know. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.